Okay. Like tiny to, wires, basically. Tiny wires. Tiny wires. And they'll find their way to specific areas of the brain to stimulate? No, you literally put them where, where they're supposed to go. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can, you can How them. long will these wires be? Uh, I mean, they usually go in like, you know, depending on where it is, like you get two or three millimeters. So they just find the spots? Yeah. Wow. Um, and then, um, yeah, and then you put the device in and that that gets, uh, that, that replaces the, the little piece of skull that was taken out. Uh, and then you, you, you stitch up the, the hole and, and um, you just have a little, like a little scar and that's it. Will this would be replaceable or reversible? Yeah. Like if someone can't take it anymore? Yeah, yeah, can, I'm too take, smart, I can't take it. Yeah, you can totally take it out. And what is the, besides re, re, restoring limb function and eyesight and hearing, which are all amazing, is there, are there any cognitive benefits that you anticipate from something like this? Uh, yeah, I mean, you could for sure, um, uh, I mean, basically, it, it, it's a generalized um, sort of uh, Thing for for fixing any kind of brain injury in, in, in principle, like if you, or if you've got like like severe epilepsy or something like that, it could it could just it could just sort of stop the epilepsy from occurring. Like you could detect it in real time and then fire a, a counter pulse and stop the epilepsy. Um, if um, I mean, there's there's a whole range of brain injuries. Like if somebody gets a stroke, they could lose the ability to speak. Uh, the, that that also that could also be. Fixed. So if you get like stroke damage, or you, you lose, say, you know, muscle control over part of your face, or something like that. I think, it, it, and then when when you, when you get old, you tend to, uh, if you get like, you know, uh, Alzheimer's or something like that, then you lose memory, and this could help you with, you know, restoring your memory, that kind of thing. Restoring memory, and what what is happening? It's allowing it to do that, like the wires, these these small wires, yeah. are stimulating these areas of the brain. And then, is it that the areas of the brain are they're they're losing some sort of electrical force? Like what it, what is happening? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's like it's like the thing of like a bunch of circuits, and there's some like circuits that are broken, and we can like uh, f fix those circuits. A substitute for those circuits. And so a specific frequency will go through this? Yeah, just a specific in that would is the process figuring out how much or how little has to be how how much these areas of the brain have to be juiced up? Yeah, I mean there's still a lot of work to do. So when I say, you know, we've got a shot at probably putting it in in, in a person in you know, a, a, within a, a year, I think that that's a, that's what that's exactly what I mean. I think we, we have a chance of putting in put in someone and having them having them be healthy and and restoring some functionality that they've they've lost. The fear is that eventually you're gonna have to cut the whole top of someone's head off and put a new top sure. with a whole bunch of wires if you want to get you know the real turbocharged version, the P100D <laughs> of of brain stimulation I mean ultimately if you if you want to go with full AI symbiosis you'll probably want to do something like that symbiosis is a scary word when it comes to AI it's optional <laughs> <laughs> I would hope so yeah it's just I mean once you enjoy the dr. Manhattan lifestyle once you once you become a god it seems very very unlikely you're gonna to want to go back to being stupid again I mean you, you literally could fundamentally change the way human yeah. beings interface with each other yes yes you wouldn't need to talk <laughs> <laughs> I'm so scared of that but so excited about it at the same time is that weird yeah I mean the, the I think this is one of the paths to um, you, you know like think like what, what are the like AI is getting better and better. Um, so now let's assume it's sort of like a, a benign AI scenario. Uh, even in a benign scenario, we're kind of left behind. You know, we're, we're, we're not we're not along for the ride. Um, we're just too dumb. Right. So, <laughs> so so how do you go along for the ride? Um, yeah, it's like you can't beat him, join him. So um, and we're, we're already we're already a cyborg 
to some degree, right? Because you've got your phone, you've got your laptop. Glasses. Your, yeah, yeah, you got your yeah. you know, sure. electronic devices. Yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, we're, today, if you, your, your phone, if you if you don't bring your phone along, it's like you have missing limb syndrome. It's like, you know, it feels like something's really, really missing. So we're already partly, um, part, you know, partly a cyborg um, or an AI symbiote, essentially. Um, it's just that the data rate to the electronics is slow. So, especially output, like you're just going with your thumbs. I mean, like, what, what's your data rate? Maybe optimistically 100 bits per second. That's being generous. Um, and, and now the computer can, can communicate at like, you know, 100, 100 terabits. So, so certainly, you know, gigabits are trivial at this point. So this, this is like, you know, basically your, com your computer could do a, a mil do things a million times faster. Or, or you're, you're, at a certain point, it's like talk. The AI is like talking to a tree. Okay, this is boring. <laughs> you talk to a tree. It's very, not very entertaining. Um, so, um, so if you can, if you can solve the the data rate issue and your especially output but input to then you can improve the symbiosis that is already occurring between man and machine.